When the Great War engulfed the world, bringing civilization as we know it to an end, it ushered in a new era of sorcery and magic. The magicians used their magic to keep order, and peace reigned for a hundred years. Until an evil magician named Dragon, seeking to control and dominate his fellow men, began to use his powers for destruction and conquest. To combat Dragon's evil, the other magicians constructed four powerful swords of wind, fire, water, and thunder. Used together, the swords would transform into the mightiest weapon ever created, the Sword Crystallis. But Dragon seized the weapons and scattered them far and wide throughout the land. Only one hope remained, a young lad, himself a great music magician, who had been imprisoned in a cave and frozen during the Great War. Though they knew it might destroy them, the wise magicians pooled all of their powers in an attempt to revive him. When the boy awoke, his mind a blank, even his name forgotten. They had vanished, leaving him to find his destiny in this strange new world. In Crystallis, you play the role of the young magician, making your way through Dragon's hostile land in an effort to locate the weapons you will need to defeat him. Dragon's monsters and black magic will threaten you at every turn, but you must not falter. Only you can deliver the world from his scourge of evil. In Crystallis, from SNK in 1990, a rare non-arcade game from SNK. Known as God Slayer, Sonata of the Faraway Sky in Japan, um, never really became a runaway hit, but is considered a bit of a cult classic now. The game's initial success prompted a release for the Game Boy Color by Nintendo Software Technology in 2000, which is generally considered more of a remake than a port, as many changes were made to the story, music, and other aspects of the game, which upset many fans of the original. The game begins with a man's awakening from cryogenic sleep 100 years after a global nuclear war. Even though he is unable to recall his name or who he was, he begins to discover that he may be the key to save this world from destruction. Aided by four wise sages and a mysterious woman, he rises up against the tyrannical Dragonia Empire to ensure that humanity ultimately has a future. Gameplay is very similar to action RPGs, very Zelda-isk. Esque, ish, esque, whatever. Uh, we have a top down perspective. We can move smoothly in eight directions using the control pad. That is not very Zelda esque. There are two action buttons one for using the sword, and the secondary button is mapped to a chosen action, such as a magical power or using an item from our inventory. Start and select bring up the status screen and inventory, respectively. In addition, we can equip various suits of armor and shields. Defeating monsters will gain us experience points and money. Experience points in this game, just like any other game, increase your level, which are actually required to use or some of the items and to damage some of the enemies. The primary means of defeating monsters is through the use of the four swords scattered throughout the land. The swords are capable of both, both normal slashes and powered up attack, attacks, which launch projectiles. Each of the four swords is imbued with a distinct elemental power wind, fire, water, and thunder, making each sword more effective than the other in various situations. The elemental nature of each sword also provides a necessary means of traversing otherwise impassable obstacles. Certain barriers will only uh, be able to be destroyed by certain swords. Uh, the method of control is very similar to The Legend of Zelda. Main difference is the emphasis is much less on puzzle solving and more on combat. Also, we are not limited to moving in just four directions, but can move diagonally. In this way, the mechanics are similar to Link to the Past, more than the original um, Legend of Zelda. <clears throat> the Game Boy Color version allows us to jump over enemies, and certain enemies can puddle and slide under the sword's reach, such as those in Link's Awakening. The gameplay of Crystallis is perhaps best described as having Zelda-style combat blended with traditional role-playing game spell casting and earning of experience points. Uh, there are several aspects of Crystallis that are based on specific elements in other media. The game's story appears to be somewhat influenced by that of um, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, his film... I'm going to get this wrong. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And some aspects of the art design appear to be as well. Um, the Valley of Wind Village Leaf may also have been influenced by the same 
uh, source. Two of the characters from Crystalis are subtle nods to earlier SNK characters who later became part of the King of Fighters series. The latter two sages, Kensu and Asina, are based on Kenso Sai and Athena Asamiya. Remember her? We talked about her in the Athena game from the Psycho Soldier arcade game. Uh, in the King of Fighters series, uh, Kensu is well known for his obsession with Athena. Quality demonstrated even in Crystalis. The original NES version was praised for its advanced graphics, high quality soundtrack, and for its elaborate plot. Very, very good soundtrack. Main criticism was of its repetitive gameplay, as many enemies can be overcome by continuous rapid pressing of one button. Some reviewers also mentioned flawed collision detection, which sometimes allows enemies to harm the player without visibly coming into contact with him. In December 2005, Nintendo Power ranked this as number 115 in the list of the 200 best NES games. The Game Boy port was not received as favorably, a majority of reviews citing is as an inferior copy due to reduced screen resolution, an altered plot, as well as the fact that the game seen, is seen as dated when compared to more recent games. The music is regarded as one of the port's worst aspects, said to be annoying and begs to be turned down. Um... Haven't played the Game Boy Color one, have played the NES one, and have seen a very good Let's Play of it, done by Ragnats over at the Low Bias Gaming site. It's fun game, but the the criticisms I feel are accurate. It does get very, very repetitive, and that can uh, that can cause you to put it down for a little while.